But this has also been a week in which the Biden administration is using what's going on in Ukraine to blame everything that's been going wrong in his administration for the past year and two months. Now, here's a great example. Joe Biden says that loosening regulations on American energy producers won't lower energy prices. In fact, he has a better idea. Watch what it is. Loosening environmental regulations or pulling back clean energy investment won't, I mean, explain, won't, will not lower energy prices for families. But transforming our economy to run on electric vehicles powered by clean energy with tax credits to help American families winterize their homes and use less energy, that will, that will help. Yeah, that'll do it, Joe. I mean, that's all we got to do is go buy an electric car. They're only $60,000 on the low end, up to one hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty thousand. So why didn't every American family just go out and get them an electric car? Well, number one, they can't afford them. And number two, there aren't that many electric cars that are available. And number three, even if you could buy an electric car and you could afford it, like Stephen Colbert, who makes $16 million a year, boasted the other night that he doesn't care what gasoline costs because he drives a Tesla. Well, if you're such a snob about it all, that's just beautiful. But even if you could afford your electric car, where are you going to charge the doggone thing? And if you got to go more than a few hundred miles, you got time to stop and plug it in for several hours while you let it charge up? I mean, the whole thing is such nonsense. I just know this. Before Joe Biden became president, we were energy independent. A year and a couple of months into his administration, and people are having to sell a kidney to go put gas in their tank. And he says, oh, it's not his fault. No, 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 no. And all we need to do is just to convert to green energy and buy electric cars, and that'll help. That'll just solve it all. Folks, I, I don't even know hardly what to say, but I'll tell you, the American people aren't stupid as he thinks they are. The other day, Will Kane from Fox & Friends was at a diner in Ohio and talked to a young man by the name of Sergio and asked him about this whole buy an electric car idea quickly, I want to introduce you to Sergio here, because the other big issue today is gas prices. And Sergio, you were just telling me, you know, they say it's easy, gas prices are going up, buy an electric vehicle, not too easy in your mind. No, I mean, who can really afford it? I mean, they're so out of touch with reality, it's just ridiculous anymore. So, I mean, just live your life, just see what's going on over there. It's, I mean, it just it helps us realize how lucky we truly are being, you know, here in America, even with the turmoil happening. It's, right. you know. Right. So here's Sergio just sitting in a diner eating sausage and pancakes, and he has better sense about what's going on than the president of the United States, for heaven's sakes. What, what can you do? I mean, yeah. it's just, it, it's... Uh, I'm at a loss. I am too. I, I really am. I think Sergio ought to be president, uh, not this guy. I'll tell you what was interesting. This week, Elon Musk, who sells more electric cars than anyone, and who really designed the kind of the quintessential... Uh, high-end version of the electric car, the Tesla, even though it would be to his detriment, he said, I think we ought to be drilling for oil and getting our own energy. It would help us. It helps our economy. I got to tell you, the more I know about Elon Musk, the more I like the guy. Yeah. You know, he's brilliant. Nobody doubts that. But he's just got more of a sense of perspective about the world and people seems to really have uh, an understanding. Maybe Elon Musk needs to run for president. Elon, if you're watching the live stream, I'm sure you are, of course, because you got nothing else to Somebody do. Somebody share it with Hey, him. yeah, be sure and let him know. I'll help run your campaign. I mean, it would be a fascinating thing. He's got lots of skills. Anyway. Uh, Rex Williams is uh, saying, am I the only one that thinks that the Biden clan is in the back pocket of Russia and China? These people are traitors in my book. Mm. Wow. Well, that's subtle, Rex. Uh, <laughs> Tell us what you really think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't want to go so far as to say that they're traitors. I, if, if it's proven that they are, then Rex will be right. But I do think that they are compromised, totally compromised, because look at Hunter Biden's uh, business dealings, not just in Ukraine with Burisma, for which he was making millions of dollars, but he also had Russia deals going. And his big money, his really, really big money, was with the Communist Chinese Party and those business dealings that he did there. A lot of that has been exposed. If you've not read Miranda Devine's really stunning book called Laptop from Hell, uh, she's the New York Post reporter that has spent about a year 
uh, really understanding what was on that laptop. So this isn't somebody who thinks he did something. This is excerpt from his laptop. It's pretty stunning. So yeah, there's some real compromise on the part of the Biden family. Uh, and it would be worth, if that's an interest to you, I, that's the best source I can think of to get it. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts. <laughs>